you wake me up? You know I hate being late. Well, you were dead to the world. What time did you get in last night? At three. That baby took its time arriving. And I'm due in Whitby this morning, too. Well, maybe you'll have an easy time at the village surgery. Fat chance with a bug that's going around at the moment. Have you eaten all the toast? It's there, dear. Oh, yeah. Mm. You wouldn't put that in the car for me, would you? Mm. Oh. oh, what have you got in here, Kate? Oh, patient's files. I thought you'd be glad to get rid of them. Yeah, delighted. Just don't fancy getting a hernia. Oh, stop moaning. You'll be fine. Well, you're not carrying the box. Get on! Maybe you'll have an easy surgery, eh? Where do you want them? Leave them in the hall for the moment. Morning, everybody! I'm sorry I'm a bit late starting today. Sit down, Claude. So, what seems to be the problem? I've, I've got some sort of flu. Every, every bone in my body uh, uh, yeah, I think it's bringing on my rheumatism. Uh-huh. How dangerously are you living? How do you mean? I mean, if your rheumatism's playing up, it's more likely to be caused by midnight rambles in the cold and damp than anything else. Oh, yeah, that's very good. You're spending too much time with the policeman. It's warping you. Let's listen to your chest. I'm going to take my coat off. That would be a good idea, yes. I hope you're going to warm that thing up. He'll come back when he's hungry. You know how much that dog means to him. We'll find it. Jamie! Mum, I'm just going to look for him. <sighs> look, it's not my fault Sam's gone missing. You were the one who insisted on bringing him. We didn't want to come here in the first place. Oh, don't start all that again. I didn't exactly have much choice. And we didn't have any at all, and now we're stuck here. Jamie, you must eat something. Mum, I don't want anything. <laughs> Morning, Tom. We lost one of the beagles yesterday. So if you see anything, I'll keep my eyes open. What happened? Oh, it's common enough if one goes off on a scent of its own. But we usually find them next day. Big meeting. Good turnout. Rotten sport. Didn't catch a thing. And the ground we covered should have been stuffed with airs. So where'd they go? Either something frightened them off, or more likely somebody's had them. Poachers? Exactly. There aren't that many dogs in the village can take down a hare, and one of them's a lurcher, if you get my drift. I'll toss you for a rest first goal. No, you won't. You're welcome to it. <laughs> Good! See, when I get behind the wheel of that, there's going to be no stopping me. We haven't been sent it solely to boost your love life. Morning, lads. Nick. I see my new motor's arrived. <laughs> uh, it's Ashford Lee's, Nick. And I spotted it first. So keep your hands off it. Oh, yeah. He thinks he's James Bond and going to pull all the birds. More like pussy galore. <laughs> Well, it's good of you to join us, Rowan. I'm uh, just going outside to test my new vehicle. I may be away for some time. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, morning, morning ma'am. Ma I see the new cars arrived, Sergeant Blaketon. Yes, ma'am. Do you know, I'm surprised you haven't put somebody out on patrol yet. <laughs> well, I was just about to, ma'am. Good, because I need you to go over the custody records, please. Ah. Well, uh, certainly, Mum. Uh, would you like to go through to my office, Mum? Thank you. Bellamy, bring in the files. And Ventress, you go outside and impress the ratepayers with our new vehicle.
How are you feeling? Well, I'm still getting these headaches, Dr. Rowan. How often? Mm, all day. I'm on my own at the garage now, so I can't take much time off. And the pills I gave you aren't helping at all? Well, not that I've noticed. When did you do that? Oh, a couple of weeks back. Stripping some rusty panels off a car. Looks nasty. Did you put anything on it? I kept it clean. Jim, that should have been properly dressed. Nah, things heal quicker in the fresh air. It's a bit itchy, but been all right. You up to date with your anti-tetanus? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, you've got to be in my line of work, haven't you? Mm. That's fine. I think I'll give you a booster all the same. Oh, the other thing is, uh, got a bit of a sore throat coming on. Let's have a look. Mm, it's a bit inflamed, all right. It's probably the bug that's going around at the moment. You're in the wars, aren't you? Radio man's here, Doctor. Are there many more patients? There's six to go. There seem to be an awful lot this morning. Well, I'm afraid you've had to see them all. Dr Rowan hasn't turned up. I see. Well, you just have to ask him to wait. She is beautiful, isn't she? What are you waiting for, Alf? This could be your chance to turn a few heads. Hmm? You wouldn't do us a favour, would you? What's that? Well, come with me. Why? Well, between you and me, it's been some time. Don't tell me you can't drive. Of course I can. It's just that uh, it's been a year or two since I've been behind the wheel. Well, come on, then. Oh. Tar love and a uh, pasty, please. Pasty, please, Uncle George. You feeling any better? Oof, worse, if anything. I think I'm coming down with flu now. Claude's got it and all. You haven't mm. seen him in here this week. What can I get you, sir? A uh, pint of bitter, please. Hello, Mick. Oh, yeah. First thirsty work shopping around here. Are you just passing through? Yes. We're caravanning. Looking for a place to live at the same time. Really? That was quick. Aye, I made it for myself. Greater love hath no man, eh? <laughs> there you go, Jim. It's a good one. Keep it changing. Thanks very much. No, you look a bit peaky. I feel a lot better if people didn't keep going on about it. How about the hair of the dog? Ease the clutch out gently. Well, let's try again, shall we? Oh, what's the matter with this car? I think you're starting in third, Alf. Oh. It's moving. Well, you've taken your foot off the brake. Oh. I should change down a gear if I were you. Oh. You'll find one you like in a minute. Oh, come on. Try using your brake. So we from round here originally, then? No, not really. I've been in the army, and we've lived all over. But uh, 
I've got a few friends up north, so it seems as good a place as any to make a fresh start. It's nice. Mm. I wonder, uh, could you give me some advice? Yeah, sure. You see, our dog's gone missing. Day before yesterday, and uh, what's the best place to put up a notice, offer a reward, that sort of thing? Yeah, we'll write it out now and I'll put it up on the wall for you. What sort of dog is it? It's a golden retriever. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, family going frantic. I'll get you a piece of paper. Jim, you haven't finished your pasty? Uh, my throat's that sore I can hardly swallow. See you. It's all. Mm, there's a lot of it about you now. Yeah. Am I going to get round? You want to come back a bit? Whoa! Oh, is that enough? Come on, Alf. I want to stop at Greengrass's place on the way back. Oh, that's up that way, then. We'll indicate, then. That's not the indicator, Alf. Basically functions as a normal two-way radio between the base station and the portable unit. Now, you can either opt for the handheld version or you can have one fitted to your car. Hmm. What do you think, Kate? It sounds ideal. But how much does it cost? Ninety pounds a set. <clears throat> Can we buy one set and add more units later? That's no problem. Ninety pounds. If the midwife service has them, we should. The police, Claude, open up. Oi, right, come on. This is a raid. Bring out your dead. What are you talking about? What dead? About a dozen hairs, from what I can gather. What are you talking about? What, what have you been putting in this porridge? It's a serious matter, Greengrass. We may have to arrest Alfred again. You yeah, what? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not been well. I've not been out for a week, neither is he. Well, that's not how it looks to Tom Gordon. Ah, oh, well, Tom Gordon wants his eyes tested. If you take any notes of him, you want your heads looking at. So you haven't been over Burley Moor lately, then? Burley Moor? How many times do you want telling I should, I should be in bed, not galloping about on Burley Moor? Yeah, all right. It looks like he's telling the truth for once. Come on, Al. Yeah, go on. Go and pass to somebody else. Greengrass's truck. Oh, let's get out of here before he sees us. Oh, no. What am I going to tell Blayton? No, don't worry about it. Just stay out of his way. I'll get Jim Swaybit to sort this out on the quiet. Oh, it's a good job they haven't fitted the radio yet. What if he comes looking for us? He won't. Now, come on. Mind the sheep. Oh, tough beggars. Why don't they read the highway code? Right, then. Right. 
I had a word with Greengrass. What did he say? Well, it's nothing to do with him. You could be right at that. I found my missing one dead, down by the woods. Well, what would that be, a fox? Might be. I've never had it happen before. But if it's fast enough and hard enough to kill a beagle, you should be able to see off a few hairs. surprise me. I've asked in the post office, I've asked in the shop, and I've also put up a notice in the local pub. So you think we should just sit and wait? All I want to do is to get up to Middlesbrough, find old Graham and see if he'll give me a job. But what about Jamie? Oh, look, he'll get over it. We had a good life in the army. Alice, all that is in the past. I mean, I didn't ask for any of this. But since I've been given my marching orders, you might as well make the best of it. I mean, look at it from Jamie's point of view. I mean, it's much better for him to make a fresh start in a new school now, when he's 13 and in two years' time. Quiet. He's coming. Mm. Any luck, darling? He'll turn up. Your father's going out for a look now, and... He's put a notice up in the village. I'll get my boots on. I should never have listened to you about that ruddy dog. Hello, love. It's finally arrived. No, it's not mine. It's for general use in Ashfordley. What's it doing here, then? Well, Alf's managed to prang it already, so I thought I'd ask Jim to have a look at it for me. Kate, why are those turnips in the back of your car? Don't ask. Shop! All right, Jim. Hello, mate. Hey, listen, can you do us a favour? And new police cars had a bit of a bump. Can you sort it for me? Uh, I'll have a look. Ooh. Are you all right? I'm, so... I'm sorry, I just keep tensing up. Yeah, let's get you out of there. Please. You get us that mug of water? Sore as hell. I'm so thirsty. Could we have a glass of water, please? Is there any stiffness in your neck? Not in particular, Doctor. It just comes in waves all over. You all feel quite relaxed. Thanks. Now just sit this slowly, Jim. Here, let me out. Oh. Oh. I think we should isolate him. What's happening? I'm going to ask James Radcliffe for a second opinion. I don't think it can be tetanus, even if it looks like it. So what do you think it is? I've never seen it, but I'm wondering if it might be rabies. Come 
Come on, darling. Look, Kate. I hope you're wrong. His muscles are relaxing completely between spasms. If it was tetanus, surely they'd stay tense. Yes. What have you done so far? I've sedated him to control the convulsions. I've seen it a couple of times before, you know. Is there any way of halting it? Once it's reached the brain, no. Well, what about vaccines? Well, they can't work. Once the symptoms show, it means it's established itself in the central nervous system. So what happens next? With rabies, it's just a matter of time. I better go and phone my sergeant. Have you asked him about being bitten? No. We better go and talk to him. How's Jamie? Upset. Oh, well, we'll sort something out. There is life after the army, you know. Are you sure this friend of yours will be able to help? Well, I can't guarantee it, but he... Well, he did say that I should contact him, sir. So... What about Sam? I think we should leave him. listen to you two. We can't. Our life's gone wrong enough as it is. I don't want Jamie to hate us. I couldn't bear it. Look, okay. I really do think we should go tomorrow. Sarge, it's me. Nick Rowan. Look, I'm at the hospital. I think we've got a bit of a problem. It must have come from abroad. Try and get him to concentrate on contacts with animals, possibly from overseas. Will he be coherent enough? He should be perfectly lucid until the convulsions start again. If they get really bad, his heart and breathing may stop. Well, can't we sedate him again? Not until we know what's caused it. We've got to know, Kate, and there isn't much time. Jim. Jim, can you hear me? Dr. Ryan. What's that meant to me? We don't know yet. This is Dr. Radcliffe. He's going to take a look at you. Jim? Am I going to die? You must keep calm so we can try and find out what this is. Now I need you to think back. Have you been bitten by any animals recently? No. Not that I can remember. Well? That's sure of it, Sarge. Well, how can they tell? Don't they have to do tests or something? Well, apparently not. He's got all the symptoms. Dr. Radcliffe's seen it before. All right. Do we know where he got it from? Well, no, not yet. He doesn't remember being bitten by anything. You can catch it if a dog just licks you. So as far as we know, Swaby could have caught the disease from any animal he's touched in the last six months. Well, that's about it, Sarge. But it does tie in with one or two other things that have been happening lately. Such as? Well, something's getting at the wildlife in the area. We have blamed it on foxes, but one of Tom Gordon's beagles has been killed. So it could be established in the wild already. Mm. What a mess. I remember an outbreak like this when I was a kid. Animals the troops brought back from abroad after the war. Well, did anyone die of it? Well, not that I can recall. Folks were on the lookout for it. First sign of a dog in a panic and someone had screamed rabies. Happened in our street once. There was this animal rushing about all over the place, great trails of saliva, and two men cornered it and clubbed it to death. Turned out there was nothing wrong with it, just a lost dog that was thirsty. But I'll tell you something, Rowan. If this is confirmed, we're in big trouble. And we've just got to find out where it started. Jim, have 
you seen any animals recently? <sighs> Village dogs or so. Well, what about wild animals? Have you been cubbing lately? No, no, nothing, nothing. Have you had anything hanging around the garage? Are you sure, Jim? Sure, sure. What about customers no. th that weren't local? No, no. Was a car. A car? A foreign car. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, foreign car. Oh, 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 poor car. So, dog, there's a friendly dog. Did it's, you touch it? I, I, I can't, probably. I don't. Have you any idea where they were from, uh, Jim? Uh, it's a broad left. It's a left, a left hand. Left hand. Uh, Caravan in. I saw the bloke in the pub. I saw the bloke in the pub. Thanks, Jim. That's a good one. That's a All right, thanks, Kate. I'll be over as soon as I can. What is it? This Swaby Sarge is in a pretty bad way. All Kate got out of him was a few words. He's talking about an Opal car, left-hand drive, a caravan, and a friendly dog. Right, we'll start a search at dawn for a friendly dog, a caravan. What was the other thing? A left-hand drive car. A left-hand drive car. Meanwhile, you get on the phone. You deal with division and the local council, and I'll try and get some sense out of the Ministry of Agriculture. Let's go. We can't. Jamie's gone. Gone? Gone where? To look for Sam, I presume. <sighs> well, let's find him and, and get on the road, hmm? Hello. Lounge. Very nice of you to spare us the time, gentlemen. Uh, Og? Land, is he here? Oh. Ireland. Fag. Fag. Oh, he's always there. Wilson. Yeah. Anderson. Ventress! Are you sure there's nothing you have to report to me? Sarge. You are aware, I hope, of the importance of reporting damage to police property. Particularly when it's so damn new, it's hardly out of its wrapping paper. Sergeant Blaketon, morning. Philip Martin from the Ministry. All right. What's the latest news? Uh, well, the entire division is checking all campsites and laybys for the suspect vehicle. Excellent. Can we start then? I'll come through to my office. If uh, nothing turns up within the next two hours, the search widens by 50 miles. Right. They're standing by from Sheffield to Newcastle. I understand the people involved were still in the area yesterday. Aye, so I believe. Where was that? At a campsite near Aidensfield. Bellamy, two T's. Right, Rowan, got it. Burley Moor campsite it is. Right. Start with a 12-mile radius around there, then. Perhaps you'd like to brief your men for the roadblock, Sergeant, while I get the local council into the area to pick up strays. And we'd better call in all local gamekeepers. We're going to need help with pest control. Right, uh, Ventress? Uh, yes, Sarge. Ventress? Yes, Sarge. Ventress! 
Yes, Sarge. Get on the phone to the local gamekeepers and check this registration with the ferry companies. Oh, that's it. Uh, right, you lot, listen to me. Uh, before we set up the roadblocks, these are the regulations. Uh, no animals to be brought into the infected area. No animals to be removed from the infected area without a special licence. All dogs to be muzzled. All cats to be kept indoors. All strays to be rounded up. And all feral cats to be shot on sight. Oh, you better shut down all hunting as well. Well, his lordship won't like that. She walked through the corn leading down to the river. Her hair shone gold in the hot morning sun. So much loud. Yeah. Hey, what's happened to Jim? Is he all right? No, he's not. Oh, what's the matter? Well, we think he's got rabies. What? Yeah, it looks like someone's brought a dog in from abroad. And now we think this man was in your pub yesterday. And do you remember any strangers? It was pretty quiet yesterday. Well, there was a man in. His name's on the notice by the bar. He's lost his dog. Oh, my God. Can I use your phone? Yeah. Oh, I've got it. Right, thanks. Well, the roadblocks will be sealing off the area by now. Can you ask your superiors to get onto the army for extra manpower? We'll need to organise sweeps of the woods of the district. Any luck with the gamekeepers? Well, they're meeting up at the Aidensfield Village Hall at midday. Good. Now, what I want you Sarge, to... I got a response on the ferries. The car was brought in by Major Michael Halstead from Germany. It was an Opal record. Sounds like a sweet. Hmm? What's up? Claude? Do you know he should be wearing a muzzle? I know a few coppers that could apply to. You can't take him out of the area. What are you talking about? I'll be bringing him back. You won't be bringing him back because you're not taking him out. It's serious, Claude. Now, come on, turn it round. Claude! What? Do you know your real eye's broken? Yeah. If I find out who did it, he's going to get gelded. Morning, Nick. What's up? We've got an outbreak of rabies. Eh? There's a retriever on the loose. All animals are quarantined within a 12-mile radius of Burley Wood. That's where your dog was killed, isn't it? Ah. I was down there again this morning. Did you see anything? Well, the pack caught a fox. Is that unusual? Very. But if it was sick or injured... It, well, this retriever's been on the loose for three days. So the fox could have been infected? They all could be. But that means my pack could be carrying it. We'll make sure you muzzle them and keep them inside. How's it passed on? Saliva, usually. It has to get into the bloodstream somehow. Talk to your vet about it. If I get any news, I'll let you know. Right. Call Dr. Radcliffe quick. So when do you expect him, Gina? Well, he didn't say when exactly. He just said it'd be quite early. Do you think he's left the area? No, not without his car. We've got people up at the campsite. So what's going to happen? Well, to house did. 
No, I mean round here. Well, it's not a good time to be a stray dog, George. Hey, is it true about Swaby? Yeah, afraid so. Claude, there's a meeting at the village hall today for all the gamekeepers in the area. Might be a good idea for you to be there. What else? Target practice. They need a bit of help, Claude. I'll have a large scotch. That's him. Morning. Major Halstead? Yes, that's right. PC Row and Aidensfield Police. We have reason to believe you breached the importation of dogs and cats, Order 1928. Would you mind accompanying me to Ashfordy Police Station? Well, that's that. We did everything we could, Kate. I just hope we're not going to have an epidemic. Major Alstead, your house did. Do you know why you're here? Yes, I do. So you admit the offence? Yes, yes, I do. To be perfectly honest, it's a relief. I'll need you to make a statement. Did you tell him about Swaby? No, Sarge. No. Uh, was I? A man has just died of rabies in our local hospital half an hour ago. You may remember him, Major. He used to run the garage in Aidensfield. He sold you some petrol. Well, I'm sorry. That's hardly the point, is it? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, are you saying that our dog... It's not exactly an everyday occurrence in these parts, Major. Right, we best get you to a doctor. And your family. Where are they, by the way? Well, they're still out looking for the dog. Well, why didn't you say so before, man? Rowan, get out there, start no. looking for him. Ventress! And you better start praying they don't find it. Jamie! Jamie! Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Thank you for coming. Let's go inside. I'll explain the plan for the afternoon. Extra manpower, help clear the woods. Control to Delta Alpha 2-4. Uh, Delta Alpha 2-4, go ahead, Sarge. The Rowan. Uh, Mrs. Alstead's turned up at the roadblock on the Strensford Road, but the boy's not with her. So get yourself over there and see if you can find out where he's gone. Yeah, I'm on my way. And Ventress? Yes, sir. You better get outside too and see if you can find him. Take the new car. Only this time, try not to wrap it round anything. How soon will you know if I'm infected? About a week, but you'll have to be tested again in ten days. Will I have to have the injections? Almost certainly. All of us? Yes. I've heard about them. I'm not sure whether my wife will be able to stand it. Believe me, Mr. Halstead, any course of injections is better than what Jim Swaby went through. Hi there, lads! Hi! 
You know you're entering the quarantine zone. Hi, North Riding Council. The dog catcher's me. Go on, mate. What's your bike? She's Halstead's here. Have you told her anything? No, I thought I'd leave it for you. Mrs. Halstead? Yes. PC Ryan. Do you understand what's going on? No, I don't. That man won't tell me anything. Is my husband all right? Is it my son? Your husband's been arrested. What? You brought a dog into this country from Germany. We were going to have it quarantined as soon as we were settled. The dog is almost certainly rabid. It's already caused one death. Now, where's your son? But he's out here somewhere looking for the dog. He could be anywhere. Well, where did you last see him? I, I think he was going to take a look in those woods. That's where I was going. All right, there's no need to budge. Here, I'll be gone. Oh, God. All right, come on. Come on, give it here. How's it going, Cole? All right. Hey, who's, who do I send the bill to for this lot? Have you got many more to do? No, this is the last. Well, come on, then. You can give me a hand. Hey, I'm nearly an old-age pensioner, you know. Sam! Sam! Here, Sam! Here, Sam! Hey boy, come on. Hang on. Somebody move it. Where? Down that wall. Jamie! Touch the dog, Jamie. I've got to get him to a vet. Jamie, come here. What are you doing? I've got to get him to a vet! No! 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 Sam! No! Jamie. No! Jamie. No! Stay with the dog. I'll send no. someone over. How long's that going to take? Well, I don't know. Jamie. Come on. Jamie, come on. What are you doing? I'm sorry, son. Tom Gordon's beagles killed a fox this morning. That makes nothing. I heard Tom say so myself. Yeah, well, that's so that's a pack of beagles or probably rabies. I'm shooting nothing. Well, I don't know what they're waiting for. They can't take any chance of having something like this. One of them dogs could get loose. Well, that's enough of that, John. If the authorities won't do it, we should get out there and finish them off ourselves. While we can. I'll have no talk of lynching anyone or anything, not in my book. You just leave these matters up to those that understand them. There's a man dead, George. Oh, and there'll be another soon. I know a lot more. Wait, job's going on. You've got a job, John. Yes, I have. Wait there. To the radio, my sergeant. Go to Alpha 24 to control. Control 
receiving. What is it, Rowan? The dog's been shot, Sarge. I'm in Burley Woods. I've got Jamie Houston with me. He's been bitten. Now, where should I take him for his inoculation? Well, let me call the doctor. Out. Where are they now? Burley Woods. Tell them to wait there. I'll find out where Dr. Rowan is with the vaccine and call you back. Excuse me. Something's come up. Ashley Pulley. Hello, this is the Edensfield Arms. George. This is Sergeant Plankton. What the hell is going on down there? Edensfield Arms. Kate, can you hear me? Yes, James. What is it? They found the boy and the dog, but the boy's been bitten. Where are you now? I've just collected the vaccine. I'm about three miles out from Pickering. I'll tell them to meet you at the Ford on the Strensford Road. You know the one? Yes, I do. And Kate, inject the globulin as close to the wound as you can. Rowan, the Ford on the Strensford Road. She's heading there now from Pickering. Right, on our way, Sarge. Right, come on, Jamie. On you get. Ventress! Uh, no, no, Ventress, we found the boy. Listen, just get down to the Aidensfield Arms now. There's some kind of riot going on. Jamie, I'm Dr. Rowan. Can you show me where you were bitten? Right. I'm going to give you an injection, and then we'll get you to the hospital. You shot my dog. I'm sorry. Right, well, I wanted to speak to you together, because what I have to say concerns you both. Now, I know that you both knew the quarantine regulations regarding the importation of animals into this country. As a result of this, you can expect a fine of 300 pounds. However, I've spoken to my superiors and their decision is that you, Major, will be charged, but you won't. But, Sergeant, it was my fault. Just let that was their decision, not mine. If it was up to me, you'd both be charged with manslaughter. Between the two of you, you've caused the death of a good man and jeopardised the life of your own son. We found him, by the way. Oh, thank God. He's in hospital. Hospital? Why? Well, he's been bitten. So they've started injections immediately. You'd best go to him. He'll be in a lot of pain. Thanks to the two of you. What will happen to Halstead? Well, he'll probably get a fine. And the papers will tell everyone what an idiot he's been. It's the boy I feel sorry for. If we're lucky, we'll have caught him in time. Doesn't do Jim much good. Well, you couldn't have known, Kate. I should have known. That's what doctors are for. To know things that other people don't. Well, it doesn't exactly happen every week, does it? Let's leave it. Now what? Hello, Nick. What have you been up to? I got into a fight at the pub. Alf, you left the handbrake off. What handbrake? 